Hey friends, welcome back to Grand Adventure. I'm your host, Mark Guido, and we are in the beautiful Walla Walla Mountains right outside of Joseph, Oregon. This episode is supposed to be about the Walla Walla Mountains, but instead I think it's gonna be more about the wildfire smoke, so stay tuned. This episode of Grand Adventure is sponsored by The Dirt Pro. Find the campsite that's right for you from over 44,000 listings, either on the web or on their number one ranked mobile app. Try all of the pro features free for 90 days by using the promo code GRANDADVENTURE90. When traveling by RV, don't always trust your GPS. Heading to Joseph, Oregon from our last stop in McCall, Idaho, Google Maps estimated our trip would take nearly four and a half hours to go only 165 miles. Although that seemed improbable, we quickly found out why, for the shortest distance to Joseph required following the shoreline of Brownlee Reservoir on the Snake River before traversing the Wallowa Mountains, which involved over 60 miles of roadway only a lane and a half wide, zero shoulder, 15 mile per hour hairpin turns in no fewer than three mountain crossings. To be sure, it was slow going. When traveling to Joseph from the south or east, don't hesitate to take the long way around instead. The Wallowa Mountains rise abruptly from the relatively flat plains of eastern Oregon, which are an arid region of the state. Now, normally you'd have a beautiful view of the mountains right behind me, unfortunately, with this wildfire smoke that moved in. And today's actually a little clearer. You can kind of see the mountains back there. Some days you couldn't see them at all, and the smoke moved in right after we arrived. So this episode isn't going to show you everything that we wanted to. We're really disappointed by that, and it just gives us another good reason to return to the area around beautiful Joseph, Oregon, which is a charming resort town here in northeastern Oregon. We're staying in the Five Peaks RV park uh, because cell service is really weak as you get down around Lake Wallowa. We'll talk about that in the course of this episode. But this has been a wonderful stay. It's a small park, maybe 15 sites, full hookup for $40 per night. We'll first show you the RV park before we head out and do some exploration and try to find some views without the smoke. You don't even have to leave the RV park to find wildlife around here.
You'll find Five Peaks RV Park and many other campgrounds that are sponsor of the Dirt Pro, either on the web or in one of their number one ranked mobile apps available for iOS or Android, where pro users can even search for campgrounds offline when cell service isn't available. Through a special arrangement, our grand adventurers get to try all of the pro features of the Dirt, including not only offline searching, but also public land map layers, trip routing, and campground and camping gear discounts, free for 90 days. Just use the promo code GRANDADVENTURE90. You'll get to try all of the pro features free for the remainder of this camping season. So what do you have to lose? Use the link provided down below in the video description today to try the Dirt Pro for free. Originally named Silver Lake and Lake City, Joseph formally changed its name in 1880 for Chief Joseph of the Nez Perce people. Its economy was originally based around agriculture, especially grain and stock. But after a railroad line was completed to Joseph in 1908, a lumber mill opened, bolstering the local economy. When the timber industry collapsed in the 1980s, local unemployment approached 17%. However, in 1982, a new industry was born as three bronze foundries opened in the local area. Today, the town and its surroundings largely rely upon tourism. Still traveling with our Salt Lake City friends, Dale and Pat, we all shared a terrific meal at the Stubborn Mule Saloon right on Main Street.
We can also heartily recommend the wood-fired pizza found at the Gold Room, right in the Jennings Hotel, also on Main Street in Joseph. One fascinating stop in Joseph for whiskey aficionados is the Stein Distillery, a family-run business for the past 12 years. Using exclusively local grains, their offerings include not only whiskeys and bourbons, but also vodka, rum, moonshine, and more. Just a mile or so south of Joseph, Wallowa Lake is a classic example of a glacial moraine lake. Form when moraines, large piles of rock and earth pushed forward by a glacier's movement, dam a river to create the lake behind them. Normally you'd see dramatic 9,000 foot mountains forming a backdrop for this view of the lake with the moraines on each side. Most regrettably, not so this week. We're now thinking of trading in our kayak for a raft just like this one. You may recall from our episode 211 from the Beartooth Mountains of Montana, we shared the story of the Wallowa Band of the Nez Perce tribes attempt to escape the U.S. Cavalry by fleeing to Canada. It was here on the shores of Wallowa Lake that their journey started for this was the tribe's summer campground and sacred land. Following conflict over ever-changing treaty boundaries, settlers murdered a number of the Nez Perce in the Salmon River area, an act that was avenged by a number of young Nez Perce warriors in 1877. Young Chief Joseph led his people away from the Wallowa Mountains in a bid to escape the wrath that would follow. And it's here that his father, Old Chief Joseph, is buried. At the south end of Wallowa Lake sits an Oregon State Park of the same name, including a campground containing 121 full hookup campsites and another 88 dry campsites. We couldn't stay here because the only cell data available is on U.S. cellular of all carriers. It's an extremely popular and busy state park, so reservations are hard to come by, but Dale and Pat managed to score a week of canceled campsites through a search with campnab.com. A terrific service that we're trying out this season that scrapes recreation.gov and Reserve America for last minute cancellations. We'll share more on Camp Nab in a future episode, but for now, it's a service worth exploring if you're trying to find hard to get reservations in state parks, national forests, and national parks.
Adjacent to the state park is Wallowa Lake Village, where tourism in the area was first developed in the 1920s. Today, it's home to an entertaining collection of RV parks, mini golf courses, horseback rides, go-kart tracks, and ice cream stands. Also departing from Wallowa Lake Village is the Wallowa Lake Tramway, a four-passenger gondola that rises 3,700 vertical feet to a restaurant at the top of 8,150-foot Mount Howard. The tramway first opened to the public in 1970, and we would have loved to have taken a ride, but it makes little sense to ride the lift today to a viewpoint where all we're going to see is smoke from the wildfires blazing in Northern California. Today, we're taking a ride back into the Wallowa Mountains to the Hell's Canyon viewpoint. I'm hopeful that there will be something to see besides wildfire smoke, but I'm not optimistic. It's here at an elevation of 5,500 feet that you take in a sweeping vista of the Snake River over 4,000 feet below and the jagged 9,000 foot peaks of Idaho's Seven Devils Mountains beyond. At least that's what I'm told. We have no way today to independently verify this. I figure that if I can't see Hell's Canyon today from a distance, I can at least see it up close. I've spotted on my map what's marked as Hess Road, which loses nearly 4,000 feet of elevation in only seven miles en route to the Snake River below. That should be my first hint, and the complete lack of any traffic on this road should be my second. We truly must return to this beautiful canyon someday to camp with clearer weather. Across the river is the beautiful Hell's Canyon campground, right on the banks of the Snake. Wanting to avoid returning to the top via Hess Road, I'm instead following the river upstream along Homestead Road to the paved road at Oxbow. Homestead Road utilizes a former railroad grade, which comes with a whole series of adventures all its own. So despite the wildfire smoke, we really hope that you've enjoyed visiting the Joseph, Oregon area and the Wallowa Mountains with us. 
Coming up next week, we're going to explore some areas around the historic Oregon Trail. So if you're not yet a Grand Adventurer, this is the perfect time to go smash that little red subscribe button down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen. And ring that notification bell to be sure that you come along on each and every Grand Adventure each and every Wednesday evening. We'd be honored if you shared the channel with your friends, family, and on social media. It's extremely important to us that if you like this episode, please be sure to give us a big thumbs up down below. And while you're down below, that's where you'll find the comment section. We always love to hear from you after each episode. So until next week from the Oregon Trail, please remember, life is nothing but a grand adventure. And we'll see you then.